Hey guys, it's Byron here and welcome to Byron's Reviews. So seeing as lately I've done quite a few collection videos like my Asylum DVD collection and my B Movie collection, I thought I'd do a collection of one of my like video game consoles and I thought what better one to do than one of my favourite systems, the Game Boy. Well, really we're doing the Game Boy, Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance today. But either way, it should be fun and it should also be a very long video. So sit tight and let's go. Um, first of all, I have a pile here that's kind of miscellaneous Game Boy and Game Boy Color games. And we have uh, Top Gear Rally, which is one of the Game Boy games that has like a rumble feature. And it's fun. It's kind of like in the style of like Outro and Rad Racer and things like that. And then we have a part of Missile Command for the Game Boy Color. Um, it's pretty cool, I think it has like uh, these little pictures and sections in between different stages and stuff, I like it. Then we have Pitfall, uh, Pitfall Beyond the, the Jungle, which is a game all about trial and error, but once you learn the stages it can be fun. And we have Wave Race, which is a fun like top down retro racer. And now we have a 2 in 1 cartridge with Super Breakout and, and Battle Zone. Uh, I like the Super Breakout mode on there because it has uh, lots of different game modes. And then we have uh, like a modern version of Pong which also has the classic version on it. Um, it's quite fun, I think the music's quite bad but I enjoy the game. Recently got the PS1 version of that, it's quite good. Then we have Solar Striker which is uh, a vertical shoot em up and I actually really like this game. I think if you're not great at shooters I think the difficulty of that one is perfect. Then we have Kicks, which is a really, really good puzzle game. Uh, it's kind of hard to describe, but hopefully some screenshots I put on screen will uh, illustrate it well. And now we have another two-in-one cartridge with Joust on Defender, two arcade classics, you can't really go wrong. And now we have Montezuma's Revenge. I haven't really played it too much, but what I've played is kind of like a, a fun side scroller. But we have Earthworm Jim, Menace to the Galaxy. I haven't played any other Earthworm Jim games, but I found this one to be quite fun, even though I assume the console versions are better. And then we have Solomon's Club, and I actually don't think I've tried this game out yet. I'll need to at some point. We have Bonk's Adventure, a really, really cool platformer, and I think the mechanic of using Bonk's head to attack is very, very enjoyable. Now we have Pit Fighter, uh, uh, a fighting game which I think is infamous for being bad. And the Game Boy part, with those added limitations of it being on that system, I think you can picture that, it's not great. <laughs> now we have another puzzle game, which is Quirk, and you really have to use your brain with this one. It's not easy, but it's very fun, I'd, re I'd recommend it. Now we have Turok, uh, a game that I don't remember being that good, I think there were quite a few cheap decks. Fortified Zone, I mean... It's okay, I remember it being kind of slow and clunky, but eh. Now we have a surprisingly good game, uh, Pocket Bomberman. And it's a Bomberman game that isn't that traditional. It's kind of a side scroller instead of a top-down maze. But it works really well, and it's a nice change of pace for, for a Bomberman game. And then we have Castlevania Adventure. Unfortunately, it's the only Castlevania game I've played, because the others tend to be quite expensive. But it was a lot... I don't know, I found it kind of slow, and the controls were a bit weird, but eh. We have some uh, some Nintendo games here, like ones actually by Nintendo. Starting off with the Pokemon games. Pokemon Pinball, which I think is a lot of fun. Uh, it doesn't try to be really realistic, but like in terms of pin pinball physics, but it doesn't need to. It's just a fun uh, digital pinball video game. Now we have Pokemon Trading Card Game, Actually a really fun game, like I learned how to play the Pokemon trading card game um, quite a while ago just with the actual cards when I was a big Pokemon nut when I was a bit younger. And this is actually a great way to learn how to play it and it just makes sense to make the trading card game an actual video game. Now we have Pokemon Puzzle Challenge for the Game Boy Color and I re really like this game, I think it's a very fast paced and fun puzzle game. Okay, now we're just getting on to the more main series uh, Pokemon games like Pokemon Crystal, Pokemon Yellow, Pokemon Red, Pokemon Silver. And I think they pretty much speak for themselves. It's Pokemon, they're classics. 
Oh, now we're getting on to some Mario stuff, including Super Mario Land, and I will link my full review to this in the description. Now we have Dr. Mario, which is, uh, I'm sure you guys have heard of Dr. Mario, it's just a very, very fun and addictive puzzle game. Now this one's technically a Mario game, because Mario is in it. Alleyway, it's basically a breakout and Arkanoid clone, but uh, a really, really well, well designed one with some really fun and creative stages, I think. I love this game right here, Mario and Yoshi. Uh, I actually did a review of this on my old channel. Uh, it, it may not be of the best quality, uh, the review that is, but I'll link that in the description if you want to hear my thoughts in more depth. It's very underrated there. And now we have Wario Blast, which is basically Bomberman with Wario slapped on. But that's not a bad thing, because Bomberman is pretty cool. Now we have Donkey Kong Land, which... It's kind of a Game Boy port, sort of, ish, of Donkey Kong Country on the Super Nintendo. And there's a lot of, I'm trying to think of the term, screen crunch, where you get attacked by things off screen and the character's way too much to the right of the screen a lot of the time. So it's a, there are a lot of cheap deaths and it's just frustrating. But Donkey Kong Land 2, I'd say, fixes a lot of those issues as it, and is a much more playable and fun game. Now we have the next Super Mario Land game, Super Mario Land 2, the six golden coins, which while I love the original, this blows it out of the water. And I think it's really comparable to even like Mario World and Super Mario Bros 3. It's a really great Mario game. Now we have Kirby's Pinball Land, which while I prefer Pokemon Pinball uh, we looked at earlier, I, I'd say this is another example of a fun pinball video game. Now we have Metroid 2, a game which I haven't played a lot, but uh, it, it, it was fun while I played, even though I don't think I really knew what I was doing when I played it. Now we have Mole Mania, and this game was designed by Shigeru Miyamoto, I believe, the guy who made Mario, and I haven't really played this game either. I, I've, ha I'm, I've been wanting to play it for ages, I just haven't got around to it yet. Now we're on to some licensed games. Uh, for the Game Boy and Game Boy Color, and if there's something you need to know about me is I kind of have a guilty pleasure of games licensed off TV shows and movies and things like that. Some are often really bad, but you can find some gems. And here we have The Simpsons Bart vs. The Juggernaut, which I think is an example of one of the bad ones, if I recall. I think a similar thing goes for this, The Amazing Spider-Man game. It wasn't that great. I think it was a very mediocre platformer. Now we have Shrek Fairy Tale Freakdown. A pretty bad game, but a game I quite like. That may sound kind of confusing, but see my full review linked in the description to hear my thoughts on it. Oh, here's an actual good one. Uh, the Flintstones, uh, King Rock Treasure Island, and this is actually just a pretty well-designed uh, little side scroll. I, I, I did enjoy it. And while I haven't played a lot of this game, uh, Looney Tunes Marsh, Martian Alert, what I've played is really good. I love the graphic style. It's very fitting for Looney Tunes. Now we have Lego Alpha Team, which is kind of a puzzle game. You have to place different tiles on its map to guide a character to an exit, but it works. I, I, I do like this game. And now we have Asterix for the Game Boy, and I love the Asterix comics, but this is an okay game, but if you want a really good Asterix game, Asterix on the, the Master System. I love that one. Okay, now we have Bugs Bunny Crazy Castle 4, and I'd say it's it's designed well, but it's just sort of boring. I can't describe it, it's just a bit boring and repetitive. And now we have a game that's, in a way, sort of like the Crazy Castle series. Garfield Labyrinth, which I think in, uh, in the US was known as the real Ghostbusters, and in Japan I think it was a Mickey Mouse game. But I actually did a, a review of this on my old YouTube channel too. Same thing with the Mario and Yoshi video. It's probably uh, a very low quality compared to my standards of the video making now. But if you want to check it out, the link is in the description. Now we have Micro Machines 1 and 2 Twin Turbo. Uh, I think it's one of those situations where it just can't match the console versions because of the hardware limitations. But I do think this is a really nice part of a Micro Machines game to a handheld, and I, I actually have played this a lot and enjoyed it. Now this should be interesting, we're on to some fake unlicensed games, mostly multi-cards, like this one, which, uh, 23 in 1, which I think contains a game called Sonic 5, which is so badly designed, and it's, it's a, a fake game, not officially by Sega or anything, 
but it's one of those games that if you tr like uh, put your friend in front of it and ask them to play it, their reactions are just priceless. And we have more of those like uh, 63 in one. Uh, and then this one even has like a button on it. It has four games and you switch the games by pressing the button on the cartridge. Odd but interesting nonetheless. Then we have more 128 in one, which most of the games are probably repeated or on the list if I recall. And now these two last unlicensed games are kind of interesting. They have very like weird casings, uh, not like, like many other Game Boy games. And I think the company is called Rocket something. Uh, it, it has Rocket in the name, but these are actually completely original games they made. And on this cartridge, there's a game called Painter. Uh, there's a Space Invaders clone also, but Painter is a very, very fun game. It has a lot of Pac-Man to it, and some of the games on these cartridges, they're not half bad. Now we have the Game Boy Camera. I think a fun little oddity, and by... Uh, at the time it was made, it, it was probably quite impressive, but by today's standards it's just a little fun thing to play around with, not much more. Now we're on to the Game Boy Advance game, starting with some Sonic stuff. Uh, this is Sonic Advance, which is a great, great Sonic handheld game, I love it. But it also has Choo Choo a Rocket on it, which is an awesome puzzle game too. Great cartridge, basically. Now, Sonic Advance 2. I haven't played this as much as the original, but I think it's pr pretty good. And that goes for Sonic Advance 3 too. Now we have Crash Fusion and Spyro Fusion, which they're not your typical Crash and Spyro games. It's kind of uh, a weird story where Crash and Spyro meet linked together uh, with lots of mini games. Uh, there are two games on it, Crash Fusion and Spyro Fusion, but they're both quite similar. Now we have Frogger's Adventures 2, which I think is a really nice modern update of Frogger. I think they've done some really creative things with some of the level designs and I think it's just a very fun game. Now we have Rayman Raving Rabbids, a series which I love on consoles like the Wii, but this is more, instead of being a game full of mini games, it's more of just a standard Rayman platformer, which isn't a bad thing because I love Rayman. Now we have Pac-Man Collection, and if you at least have some interest in Pac-Man, I think you owe it to your yourself to own this cartridge. It has the original Pack Attack, which is an interesting puzzle game, uh, Pac-Mania, and the amazing Pac-Man Arrangement, a really fun modern version of Pac-Man. Now we have the Columns Crown, uh, based off the Sega Classic Columns, and it's just a fun version of Columns. Columns is probably my favourite puzzle game ever. I probably even prefer it to Tetris. I know, oh, that's a bold claim. Now we have another Rayman game, Rayman 10th Anniversary, which I think includes Rayman Advance and Rayman 3. Both pretty fun games. Now we have Pac-Man Pinball, another fun digital pinball game, starring Pac-Man. Now we have Wolfenstein 3D, which um, I think is, is, is a good game once you get over the low frame rate, but it's a first person shooter on the GBA, I think that's just impressive in its own right, and it's quite fun to play. Now we have some Pokemon games on the Game Boy Advance, including Pokemon Emerald, which is another great main series Pokemon game, uh, Pokemon Pinball Ruby and Sapphire, the sequel to the original Pokemon Pinball, probably even more fun than the original in my opinion. Uh, Pokemon Leaf Green, which is a very fun remake of Pokemon uh, Red and Blue. And now we have F-Zero Maximum of, of, of Velocity, which I've actually spent a lot of time with, and it's just a really fun F-Zero game. I love the original F-Zero, and I guess I love this one too. Now we have Metroid Fusion, which I've actually been playing quite a bit of on the bus lately, and I am really enjoying it actually. Uh, I haven't had much experience with Metroid, but I'm really enjoying that. Now we have The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past, and I tried playing this game a while ago, and it's probably just because I suck at RPGs like this, but I, I got stuck very quickly and I didn't really know how to pr progress, but maybe if I spend more time with it I'll be able to get past it, because people really do say it's one of the best games of all time. Now we're on to the licensed games on the Game Boy Advance, starting with Shrek 2 and Shrek 2 Beg for Mercy. Um, maybe I should do like full videos of these at some point because I actually think these are like hidden gems for the Game Boy Advance. They're, they're very generic but at the same time they're really fun platformers for the system. Unfortunately I can't say the same for this Shrek game which is 
Shrek's one card speedway, a racing game, man. It's just quite poorly designed. Now we have Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, a game I haven't played a lot of. I know I've said that about a lot of these, but it, it seems like a fun RPG. Now we have Bionicle, uh, a game which I've uh, I, like A Link to the Past is kind of like an RPG and I got very stuck with it very early on in the game and I didn't know how to progress so I stopped playing. Now we have Mighty Bean's Pocket Puzzles which I think is probably a mediocre puzzle game uh, but I used to collect the Mighty Bean's toys so I decided to get this ages ago when I was a lot younger. Now we have Crazy Frog Racer, yes based off that weird music video years back. And this is just a very glitchy racing game. Like, I think if you lap uh, uh, a player, you, it just glitches the game. It's, yeah, I think that says it all. Now we have Tom and Jerry, The Magic Ring. And I'm very nostalgic for the movie this is based off. I think it's very fun from what I remember. But this, this is a very, very lazy, like, beaten up. It's very lazily made and I would not recommend it. We have Yu-Gi-Oh! GX Duel Academy. Um, I never really played Yu-Gi-Oh! when I was younger or watched the show. Don't really know anything about it, but I have this because a friend gave it me. Now we have The in Incredibles, a game that I'm quite nostalgic for, but it's one of those situations where I can't remember if it's actually good, because it may just be the nostalgia talking when I praise it. Now we have another multi-cart, which is 120 in 1, and... Uh, I think it has quite a few NES games on it, if I recall, so interesting. So that's my Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance collection. It's probably the biggest collection I own in terms of the video games, but if you want to see uh, my collection of any other systems, like I have quite big DS and Wii collections, uh, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do. But until next time, I will see you later. Bye! Well, this is going to be fun to clear up.